Hello, a very warm welcome to today's Scottish Zoom panel call, where we'll focus on WHS for club officials. I'm David Kernan, Handicap and Course Rating Officer here at Scottish Golf, and alongside me is Adam Phillips, Handicap and Course Rating Coordinator. On today's call, you'll have the opportunity to hear from Adam and I as we answer some of the most frequently asked questions we have received from clubs since going live with WHS earlier this month. We'll also discuss some of the key resources we have produced to support with the WHS transition process. Since going live, we have seen the system work really successfully across Scotland and the calculator has already processed almost 30,000 scores. We now have over 88,000 registered users on the Scottish Golf app and over 3,000 golfers have, have submitted a general place score on the app. So thank you very much to, to all those golfers and golf clubs for embracing the new system and, and getting those scores in so that we could get, get some really robust testing done for WHS. Uh, as with all change, it is key that we continue to work together to ensure that the transition process can continue to be as smooth as possible. And today's session will help to bring all clubs up to speed on how you can access the latest WHS resources and information, as well as answering your questions that you've submitted. Uh, so thank you to everyone who's submitted their questions ahead of today's panel. Uh, we have grouped these into key topics. Uh, so if we don't answer your specific question today, um, we, we have grouped them into topics as much as possible, but don't forget you can still submit your questions using the Q&A button at the bottom of the screen. And if we don't answer your questions today, do not worry, we will be putting an FAQ document together which answers every question um, that's been submitted for us um, in relation to this panel. Uh, so without further ado, I'll get on. And the first thing we just want to give golf clubs an understanding is kind of like a, a quick tour of the, the tools we've pulled together um, for WHS. So if um, I'm just going to share my screen here. Adam, so if you let me know when you can see that screen there. Shoot, sure, David. Fantastic. So obviously this is the, 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 the kind of platform that every golf club should have access to now. Um, so you won't see all these buttons across here. This is obviously just some more functionality which, which can be made available to clubs. But at the minute you'll have the venue tab, uh, which is where you set up your venue and your courses, the tournament and events tab for your open competitions, um, and the WHS CDH tab, which we'll be focusing on today. So when you go in here, it'll give you a list of all your golfers uh, that you have listed against your golf, <coughs> golf club. And when you go into a player's profile, you'll see there's five, uh, five, five kind of tools across here, as well as a delete button. Um, so the first one, the general play button, that is for any general play score submitted within Scotland. Uh, so you can click on, on the golf club and, and, the, and the course and then enter the hole by hole information um, when, when that comes up uh, for, that, for that golf course. And you can confirm that and that will go directly onto a player's scoring record ready to be calculated this evening as part of the WHS process. So that's once again, all general play scores within Scotland. The away general play is for any uh, score submitted outside of the jurisdiction. So across the rest of GB and I or, or anywhere else in the world. And when you select that, you'll simply enter, type in the course name, um, sorry, type in the course name, um, the T set, if it was a nine hole, you can put the competition in if it was a competition and obviously the date. And then you'll simply put in um, the slope rating, course rating, the adjusted gross score. And if you know it, the PCC, but on, on many occasions, you may not know the PCC. So you'll be finding that. You'll just put in, in those kind of three um, values there and press confirm and it'll go directly onto a player's record. Uh, what, one question we have been asked a fair bit is how can I give someone an exact handicap? I want to give someone a handicap of 10. If you use the general play function um, for Scotland, obviously it, it, it applies hole by hole values, but you could use this in theory, as long as you put in the slope of 113, um, which is the average slope and you, and you make sure that the um, adjusted gross score, if I was trying to give someone a handicap of 10, the adjusted gross score was, was 10 shots higher than the course rating, that would obviously work out a score differential of 10. You could do that three times in order to give someone a handicap of 10. So you could use that functionality in theory to apply someone um, or give someone a handicap directly. Because obviously under the new system, you can't just award a handicap index. You do need three scores on the system in order to calculate that HCI. So you could use that tab in order to give someone an exact, exact handicap if you wanted to. The next one is the adjustment tool. And just so everyone know, this has been updated to accommodate decimal points now. Um, under the rules, it was just one, it was just full, full integer values, but it's now been updated to um, be able to apply decimal points. So once again, anything you apply in here will affect every single score on the scoring record and apply an adjustment to that. 
Um, that's how the system's been designed. We have had, had questions, will we get the opportunity to um, change initial or, or individual records? Could I just change one slope rating or one adjust to gross score? And there's never gonna be a tool available in order to do that unfortunately because of the nature of the WHS system. But I know one thing we have had a few questions on as well is I'm trying to get someone's handicap exact. So from 12.5 to 12.3 and and I think it's a little bit of a different mindset under WHS. We're under the Congo system. We obviously focused a lot on someone's exact handicap, you know, the incremental system where I think under the new system, as soon as that player goes and submits a score, um, if, if you've changed someone's handicap from 12.4 to 12.3 and they go out and submit a score and they have quite a, 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 a good score fall off their record or, or their best state and then a higher score come onto their record or vice versa, their handicap index will actually change quite significantly depending on, on what's fallen off and what's come on. So it would almost make that that one decimal point you've changed your hand, the handicap irrelevant. So I know we want to get everyone's handicaps, you know, as, as, as accurate as possible. I think sometimes the best advice would be to go out and start submitting scores and just see how how your handicap kind of readjusts based on based on the, the functions of the system. So once again, that's the adjust button and you can do that now for incremental changes and apply any changes. Um, the next one would be the recalculate button, which obviously just recalculates any scores on the record, but it does take into consideration any low handicap index limit. So if you've deleted a score and you've tried to recalculate it, but it hasn't moved the handicap index, it may be because there's a, there's a handicap limit in place stopping that. So. If you delete scores, you can. it should recalculate them automatically, but if you do press that recalculate button, if, if the handicap isn't moving, it's because there's a, there's a cap in place stopping that from moving, um, which obviously takes us on to, to the override low index button, which would in theory, which is what it does, not theory, it actually calculates all the scores on the record and actually resets the low handicap index. Um, so that, that would actually be reset. So the handicap index would change depending on the scores on their record and not take into account any low handicap index, which may be applied to the player. Another one we've been asked going back to the adjustments is, is, is what should I use this for after the initial and the adjustment tool going forward would really just be used for your, your end of year review, your handicap review. Or, or maybe applying an adjustment to someone who, who doesn't actually, you know, their, their handicap doesn't represent their demonstrated ability anymore. They've had an injury or illness or they're coming back from golf after a long layoff. You could actually, you know, put in an adjustment and, and then do the override low, low index and that will recalculate um, based on the adjustment you've made and, and then obviously override any low handicap index. The other tool we're gonna to look at here, which is a new one, it's not a new one we had in the old system, but it's obviously the ability to search for a player um, on the CDH, uh, you can search it by first name, second name, um, or, or ID, or an abbreviation, it doesn't have to be the full name. And that'll just give you the, where that golfer is a, is a member of. So one question we have asked is obviously a, a golfer's fallen off my record or, or something like that, um, or fallen off our system, you know, why would that have been? And we'll touch base on that in a little bit more detail, but it, it may be that they weren't actually linked correctly to your golf club on the, on the CDH. So you could use that CDH functionality in order to to look up where that golfer may be a member and you can contact that golf club in order to get them to release that player so you can claim them. And the last thing I want to have a look at in here is just the use CDH system. So some golf clubs have asked us, how can we view our old records? So we put this kind of tick box in. So um, if you click this tick box here, use CDH system, you'll be able to go into a player's record and you'll be able to see the scores we've actually used from the old CDH in order to calculate a player's WHS index. Um, some of the questions we've had on this is that I've had a player, there's obviously scores there. Um, why haven't they been used? You, you need to have a look at the dates. So we had a lot of players who, who we only went back to the, to the start of 2017 um, as per the WHS document in order to calculate a player's handicap index because any further back than that, we didn't really feel it would have been reflective of their demonstrated ability. So you may have golfers that, you know, their first score starts in 2016 and they may have a really full record going back to, you know, to 2013, but we haven't, we haven't transferred their, those, those scores because we only went back to the 2017 start of, in order to calculate a player's handicap index. The other ones we get asked a lot from this section here is the course name. It doesn't match what's on the initial handicap index. Why is that? And even though it says course name under the old system, it was golf club name. So your golf club may play over a, a multitude of courses. 
So obviously we couldn't match every single golf course because there's no there's nothing in the old CDH that identifies a T set apart from um, the SSS. And we used that standard scratch score in order to go and often and um, find the nearest T set on the US USGA ID in order to use that slope to calculate the score differential. But we didn't use the 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 um, course rating, which is a question we do get asked a lot. The course rating doesn't seem to match what, you know, it doesn't seem to calculate the, the adjusted gross score minus course rating. We didn't use the course rating because we already had the, uh, the gross difference, which was the adjusted gross score minus the competition scratch score, which gave us that gross difference. And it's that gross difference that we use to calculate the initial uh, handicap index. So that's a really good tool if you wanted to go back and, and view the CDH records and what we've used in order to upload a player's um, details in order to calculate the WHS index. And so that's a bit of a whistle stop tour, I guess, in, in all the functionality. Make sure you tick that back off to go back to the WHS system. But that's, I guess, a, a whistle stop tour of how you can use those tools in order to adjust your player's initial handicap index to get it as accurate as possible or as accurate as, as you want it to be moving forward. The next thing we want to discuss is the initial scoring records. We've obviously received many emails from clubs and golfers asking um, about the initial scoring record. See that okay, Adam? Yes, that's okay. So yeah, we've, we've received a lot of emails on the initial scoring record. Um, a lot of golfers just asking for a little bit more detail. Can this be changed? Can we go back and change the individual slope ratings? The slope ratings don't match what was on, on the USGA database, things like that. So the slope was obviously the historic slope ratings that we used pre WHS and a few courses may have had their course ratings or slope ratings and all that updated this year, which is why that value may be different. Um, but we, we, we can't now revisit the initial calculation. Um, that has been that has been finalised and we've shared a document with, with all golf clubs explaining the challenges, I think, from moving from a, a distributed, distributed system to a centralised system and also the challenges we had with the data that had been uploaded to the previous CDH. One recurring question that we've been asked a, a lot recently and it seemed to impact a lot of golfers and golf clubs is that golf clubs have forgotten or just not issued a, a CDH number for a golfer. Um, and these golfers have sent in records um, asking us to upload their, their, their CDH record to the new WHS um, CDH. Unfortunately, if a player was not awarded a CDH number, um, they won't have had a WHS index um, calculated because we, we just didn't have access to their, their data in order to do that. And we can't now go back and, and upload that data retrospectively. And it was, it was one of the key points we did discuss in, in the documents and in the newsletters was that a golfer needed to have a have a CDH number, and that's that record needed to be uploaded to the CDH. So, unfortunately, the only kind of fix for this is that a CDH needs to be created, and then the scores uh, need to be uploaded manually to that player in order to calculate a WHS index. So, golf club can decide if they want to put three scores, or they want to put twenty scores. You'll have those scores on your club software, but unfortunately, because a CDH number was never created. Um, we do not have the capacity in order to, to go back um, to upload those records. Even if even you, if you've now given that goal for a, a CDH number, that's another question we've had is, okay, I've gone into my club software, I've issued that goal for a, uh, a CDH number, but I can't get their record to, to upload. It's because the old, the old CDH system that, that that record linked to is now, there's now no longer any link to that. So that's why um, that scoring record can't be uploaded. So once again, the only way in order to fix that is to award the goal for a CDH number and to upload their scores manually onto the system. I guess it brings me on to the next question we get asked quite a lot is why a golfer has disappeared from, from our system. Um, the common issues is the golfer was never awarded a CDH as we just spoke about. The golfer is still linked to another club in the CDH. We spoke about the CDH uh, lookup tool you can use to uh, find out where that golfer may be, may be linked. And the last one was the CDH number was not actually a valid CDH number. We've, we've, we've had instances that we've looked up where a golfer may have given a golf club a CDH number. The golf club put that into their club software, but because it wasn't a valid number, it actually never linked, linked to anyone on the CDH. So that would be another reason why a golfer may not have um, had a WHS index um, calculated was a CDH number. It wasn't actually valid. Um, 
So it's, it's really important that a golfer has been resigned or claimed correctly. So in the old system, you may have set a golfer to away or um, you may have reset the new home club on your software, but unless the golfer was actually resigned um, correctly in the CDH, that when the CDH system was, was uploaded, they would have disappeared from your system and gone back to where they were listed to on the CDH. So if you have had players who've disappeared, it's, it's, it's useful to go and look at that lookup tool, find out where that golfer has been, has been registered or linked to in the CDH and ensure that either the golfer or the golf club has been made aware that they need to resign the player correctly um, in the system before you can claim them as a member. So they're probably the three key common issues of, of why a golfer would have disappeared from your system. Moving on to the next one, I think resigning and claiming a player, just following the trend here, you should be able to do this through your ISV. Um, the, the APIs and the endpoints is provision in this under WHS for, for golf clubs and for, for software providers to, to claim and resign a golfer um, through those systems. The golfer must be resigned correctly um, before a club can claim them. Um, there's no longer a waste status within the CDH and no longer com conflicted or pending status within the CDH where in the old system, if a, a golf club claimed a player and if that player was a member essentially of two different clubs, or two different home clubs in the CDH, they were listed as what's called conflicted or pending status. Um, and, and the CDH just would return an error message if any scores or, or anything was trying to be uploaded against those players. So once again, at time of transition, if you had a player that was in conflicted or pending status and they had no scores uploaded against them, that may be why they um, didn't have a WHS index calculator because we have found that certain players have been in conflicted or pending status for, for a number of years and essentially didn't have any scores uploaded to the CDH. And lastly, it's really important. Um, it was always important under the old system, but even you know important now moving forward that one CDH number because we're now calculating everything centrally against that one CDH number, it's really important that the golf club and the golfer ensure that the golfer knows what their CDH number is. And they take that, that CDH number to a new golf club or every time they change clubs. I think in the old system, um, you know, we had 370,000 CDH numbers for 90,000 golfers. Um, and obviously we've put a lot of new, um, uh, I guess safeguards in place to ensure the verification of, of that CDH number so that we can't create duplicate CDH numbers. But it's really important that um, one golfer has one CDH number and they always use that CDH number as they travel from, from course to course. Because if they don't and you award them with a new CDH number, then they'll essentially have two WHS records. And now that everything's done centrally, those two WHS records will not speak to each other. So as it was in the old system and as is in new systems, it's really important that one golfer just has one CDH number um, within, the, within the WHS CDH. I'm going to hand over to Adam, who's going to discuss a, a little bit more about the, the questions on the WHS system in a bit more detail. Over to you, Adam. Thanks, David. I'll now look to cover some of the other common questions we're receiving, more relating to the rules of WHS. First one is golfers from different jurisdictions. At the minute, we do not have the provision to confirm golfers handicaps or CDH numbers from, different, from a different jurisdiction. We are, of course, pushing to have a link set up with the other GBNI nations as soon as possible. And the RNA, USGA are also looking at a global system so that all platform providers from around the globe can share information so that one golfer will be able to have a single WH, WHS record globally in the future. In the interim period, the rule allows for handicaps in different jurisdictions. And for example, for overseas members who maybe spend a month or so here during the summer, although they live and play most of their golf in a different country, you will need to set these members up with a Scottish CDH number and award them a handicap index here until the cross-border systems are set up. This includes members from the other GBNI nations and so these players would, would just need to email scores back to their club record in, in the other country and vice versa. When you receive such scores from the other countries, this is where you would use the away general score option within VMS, as opposed to the, the general score button, as David covered a bit earlier on there with those on-screen examples. Another common query we, we've received is on the topic of plus handicap golfers. 
we have received a lot of questions from clubs and golfers thinking that the calculation of a course handicap for a plus golfer is wrong because they get even less shots on a course with a higher slope rating. This is in fact correct. And, and looking at the table here, we'll, we'll have a look um, how it works. So how the system works is if you use the scratch golfer as the balance point, if a scratch golfer goes to a course with a higher slope rating, they will still always get zero because simply if you multiply anything by zero, it still equals zero. Therefore, why should a plus handicap golfer who's a better golfer than a scratch player receive an advantage over the scratch player on a course with a higher slope rating? It's, it's important to remember the system is all about equity. So depending which side of that, which side of scratch you, you are, a player will always move away from that center point. Look, looking at the example below in the, or on the slide here on the table, the, the middle table, we can see that regardless of which set of tees they play, the scratch golfer's course handicap is still scratch. Looking at the right-hand table, we can see that for a golfer with a handicap index of 15, the course handicap moves up to 18 from the back tees. And finally, over on the left-hand table, we can see that for the plus handicap golfer, as they play on a course with a higher slope rating, their course handicap moves further away from that balance point of zero. This table is quite good. It helps to illustrate the equity of the slope system, where you will see a higher course handicap allowance as you increase the handicap further away from the scratch player. This is to reflect the increased difficulty that higher handicap players have in playing a course with a higher slope rating. The same principle therefore applies when going the other way, the low scratch, when applied to plus handicap players to maintain that equity across all the handicap ranges. Moving on to plain handicap calculation, a common question we get on this is, why are we not rounding the course handicap before applying the plane allowance like the other home nations in GBNI? The reason is, once again, it's about equity. The actual rules of handicapping state in section 6.1b that rounding scores only after the plane handicap calculation and also in the technical specs, they also state that plane handicaps are calculated using the true course handicap values retained to machine precision before rounding to an integer value at the very end of the calculation. So it is about equity because if you rounded the course handicap first, then applied the plane allowance, players would receive more or less shots than they were actually entitled to, which would go against why WHS was introduced. We consulted with the RNA on this and it was strongly recommended that no change was made to this calculation. One of the main objectives under WHS is to allow golfers to compete on that fair and equal basis. And an important point to remember here is that when it comes to the plane handicap, your competition software will make all the adjustments for you in the background. So players don't have to worry about being mathematicians or writing this on the scorecard. The key one is the, the course handicap. That must be put on the scorecard for both competition and general play under the rules of golf, which is used to update players' handicap index for the next day. So if members are not used, if they're not using an electronics um, scorecard, which will pull through the course handicap for them, they should get used to just being in the habit of using the course handicap lookup tables provided for them at the course and just enter their gross scores for each hole as they normally would. Just a quick reminder that for for Stableford competitions, if players are deciding whether to pick up on a hole, they must use the course handicap as this is the higher value and will be used for handicap adjustment purposes. The competition software will of course work out their points for them using the plane handicap. And for stroke play, again, it will be the plane handicap that is used to calculate players net scores for the competition. The only time that the plane handicap may raise a question is for match play team events, where a software product isn't going, isn't doing the calculation for you. What, one other point to cover on the plane handicaps, which we do get asked a lot, is why do we have a 95% allowance for stroke play? The reason is to provide equity in 
in the competitions for all the players. The Congo system, as we know, was an incremental system that used that element of potential in the calculation of exact handicaps. With WHS, on the other hand, we know it's an averaging system that focuses on the current demonstrated ability and the different characteristics of the two systems mean that equity for the different competition formats is not exactly in the same place as under the old system. Research into the scoring for WHS indicated that for GBNI, a 100% allowance favoured results for higher handicap players. And so to provide the same equity for all levels of player, a lower value was needed and 95% was found to provide that happy medium for, for everyone. One final question we do get quite a lot on the plane is, is the plane handicap allowance for competitions with less than 30 players. A 100% allowance has not been adopted in GBNI for field sizes less than 30. It will, it will be a straight 95% used for all field sizes. Moving on, um, David, to the next slide. So we have we have had a number of questions around the course data that we use for handicapping purposes. In accordance with the rules of handicapping under Appendix A, the national associations have the right to determine the stroke indices for handicap purposes. In the months leading up to WHS, we had issued a readiness document for clubs to ensure that the relevant course information was uploaded to the platform to enable the transition to WHS for all clubs and their members to take place. Unfortunately, many because many clubs hadn't completed this, the data was incomplete and couldn't be used. Therefore, what we had to do was a blanket upload for all clubs using the WHS system, which has its own methodology for stroke index allocation, which can be viewed in Appendix E of the Rules of Handicapping booklet. I'm sure you've, you've all got a copy there. This allocate stroke index is based on the USGA course rating system, which is part of WHS, and the stroke indices are calculated using the plane difficulty of each hole objectively, and therefore aligns with the very same information already used to calculate the slope ratings of each course. This does ensure a consistent method of calculating net double bogeys and net par adjustments for handicap purposes for all players under WHS. This is of course just for hole by hole adjustments to a player's record and a golf club can indeed set their own stroke index values directly with your competition software provider used for calculating competition results. You, you will be able to see the USGA stroke index data in the course field of the VMS platform, which you can see in the USGA column on the slide here on the scorecard on the right. And, and you can see that's in comparison to the course's existing stroke index values in the column just to the left. This is a common question we've had and explains why some stroke index boxes are shown in red. And as we mentioned, clubs can of course continue to use existing stroke indexes for competition purposes. Just, just to recap on the WHS stroke indexes, they are actually produced using the WHS methodology outlined in, in Appendix E if you have a look at that, and of the rules of handicapping, and they're based on the whole by whole course rating data that we collect when we rate your golf course. By helping clubs understand the accuracy of this information, many clubs are actually now reviewing the stroke index allocations, which have been in place for years, to now match what the course rating system recommends, and therefore aligns directly with WHS for consistency of handicap adjustments. Moving on, David, to... If I could just come in there, Adam, could I just add to that? I think there's been a few questions on, on, on I guess, why we've done it, and the answer was purely out of necessity rather than want. If, if we hadn't uploaded all that data into the WHS platform, we just would have had far too many clubs that weren't that weren't ready for WHS. I think we had almost 200, over 200 clubs that hadn't uploaded any any course data to the WHS platform. Um, so if, if we hadn't done that, you know, we just would have had far too many golf clubs that... I guess when ready for WHS, the course information wasn't ready or available for any scores coming in. Um, so we, we, we can change these things. We will change these things. If a golf club doesn't want to, as Adam said, a lot of golf clubs are changing 
their stroke indices to match the USGA, uh, the WHS core threading system. And of course, we, 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 we will get to a place where we have every single bit of course information that we can make the changes to the WHS platform so that the, the stroke indices match what a golf club wants to have on their scorecard or what, what, what does have on their scorecard. But it, it was a decision that we had to take purely to make sure that, that, that every golf club is ready for WHS on the 2nd of November. Thanks, David. Moving on to cover winter handicaps. Again, we've had a number of inquiries on this question of winter handicaps. So separate winter handicaps will not be an option in GB&I under WHS and are also not used in any other jurisdiction around the globe. Under WHS, handicaps can only be calculated centrally by the national associations and not locally like they previously were. Therefore, there's no longer an option for clubs to run a ring-fenced winter handicap solution under WHS because there's no inactive season in GB&I. Therefore, scores should be uploaded to a player's record at any time of year, provided they meet the criteria. WHS contains enough scope for scores to be submitted year-round towards a player's official handicap index. As such, there's no need for a separate winter handicap. As, as examples, we would point to the following features of the system. So with WHS, as we know, it's an average-based system based on demonstrated ability, and as such, it focuses on good scores as opposed to bad scores. Therefore, if the objective of clubs is to really only handicap players who have scored well, well, WHS should be able to help out and reflect that. Bad scores are more likely to be one of the discarded 12 on the record. There's the PCC is in place, which accommodates conditions which are significantly different from normal, which are more likely to be the case in the winter months. There's also the option for clubs to conduct shorter forms of the game, not just nine hole play, but also for example, 12 hole competitions, scores from which can be scaled up to an 18 hole score for handicap purposes. Winter competitions can still be run within specific guidelines provided by Kongu Scores are still deemed to be acceptable for handicap purposes if preferred lies are in operation or players are required to use fairway mats. Also, scores can be submitted where no more than two temporary winter greens are in play. Shorter courses from winter tees can also be rated if they have been yardage measured from the distance points. So uh, clubs, of course, can still run winter competitions and set them up as non-qualifying but the scores will not count a player's record and the handicap will not change after these rounds. And the easiest way actually to provide a, a course and playing handicap for a winter course would be to use the, the closest rate, rated set of forward tees that you have if they are within 100 yards. If the winter course is between 100 and 300 yards shorter, you could use the chart in Appendix G of the rules book um, to adjust the course and slope rating down accordingly and set that up in your competition software for results purposes only. Moving on, we just wanted to touch on the PCC again, just to the, the plane conditions calculation, which we do get asked quite a lot. So just to recap on the main, main features of it, it is performed once at the end of each day. It considers all acceptable scores submitted on a given course each day from all sets of tees. It, doesn't, it includes only acceptable scores submitted by players with a handicap index of 36 or below. It equals zero if fewer than eight acceptable scores are submitted over that day. Where applicable, it does not include scores that are scaled up to nine hole or 18 hole scores. And the, the adjustment it can de determine is between minus one and plus three. And it's applied to the score differential value for all players. We have found, which uh, some of you will have found as well, we, we have found that it's quite conservative in nature compared to the CSS and initial data has shown it does not react as severely as the CSS. And so that's that's some of the key uh, themes that we've we've covered and I'll now hand back over to David to, to cover some of the more common themes that we're receiving in. Thanks Adam. Um, so obviously Redbox TBC app issue, we, we, we've had a few emails about this and we just want to clarify that the Redbox issue is, is a safeguard. It's been built into the system to stop a golfer 
who's no longer of a member of a golf club, um, basically getting access to functionality like general play. Um, so it's really important uh, when your players register, for, if they're going to use the app, they register through the app. The Scottish Golf website was designed for, for, for those golfers um, potentially who didn't have an app in order to access their information. And, and that's why potentially these golfers have, have had that red box issue because they've, they've um, registered through the Scottish Golf website, then gone to the Scottish Golf app and logged in. So there was kind of like a, it wasn't linking to their home club correctly like the registration process does through the app. But good news is, is we ran a program over the night last night, our providers designed a program which should now have um, ran through the whole, the whole uh, platform and actually linked every player correctly um, based on their CDH number and their CDH home club. Um, so um, if, as long as a player kind of um, clears their cash now, logs back in, um, they'll get an, an update automatically to the app and they should be able to see all that information um, accurately and hopefully without that red box. There may be the, the occasional one that, that still gets it. And obviously, once again, any golfer that does experience that um, can contact us via the contact form. It's really important that they reference the app a registration um, when, they, when they use that contact form so that it goes to the, the correct place. We have noticed the contact form has been going to, to other, other email addresses within the organization. So it's really important that, that um, the contact form, they do reference the app and registration um, when they send in that contact form. But as I said, we ran a program over the night, overnight last night, which should have, which should have rectified anybody who's having this, this issue. So um, hopefully um, the golf clubs will stop uh, getting, getting asked questions on the red box um, and that all golfers will be able to access all the functionality they should do as a golf club member. General place um, to move on to now. So I think there's a couple of things to clarify with general play. Obviously there's general play in the Scottish golf app and there's potentially general play um, via your club software provider, club software product. So I think for general play in the Scottish Golf app, I think obviously rule 2.1 permits the National Association to set the requirements or conditions that apply to pre-registration, um, which we've chosen to do when it comes to general play scores being submitted via the Scottish Golf app. Uh, so as per the rules, a player must register their intent to play before a round has started. Um, we have put a lot of safeguards in place uh, to ensure the integrity of these scores coming in, things like geolocation um, for both pre-registration and score submission. So a player must be at the golf club or within a certain radius of the GPS coordinates of that golf club. Otherwise, they won't see how the score of the courses that are available. We've had a lot of, of emails from golf saying there's no courses coming up when I when I select general play, and it's it's because they're not within the the vicinity of that golf club in order to, to get, get access to those course details. Um, there's a time delay for submitting scores. So obviously um, you can't just pre-register and submit the score straight away. Another question that we've had, I can't submit that score and it's because there'll be a time delay which does come up on the app. Um, also marker verification, signature and details um, and a digital scorecard is created and stored both in the app, um, in the player's WHS handicap record. You'll see a little blue box which says scorecard and also be made available in, in the near future to golf club administrators. Um, it, so they can actually see that scorecard on, on the player's WHS record as well in the near future. Um, penalty score will automatically, in the near future, we, this will be a design that's coming in short, will, will be applied automatically for a score that's pre-registered through the Scottish Golf app. Um, as per the rules, if a score has been pre-registered for it, it, it must be submitted unless there's a valid reason for not submitting those scores and the, and the valid reasons are outlined in the, in the, in the WHS rule book. But this is really, we wanted to automate this process to reduce the administrative burden on, on golf clubs. We know that general play is going to be a big opportunity for golfers under WHS. And there's going to be a lot of golfers looking to, to, to use that functionality. And as we've already had, as I said, over 3000 scores come in to the system via, um, via that, um, by the app. So um, I thought it was really important that we kind of automated that process as much as possible for clubs. Obviously a golf club will be able to go in and use the tools if they do speak to a golfer. Golf says, I've got a, a, you know, got a score come onto my record because um, uh, I pre-registered and I didn't submit the score. The golf club will of course um, have the authority to go into the WHS CDH and be able to delete that score. And then upload a general play score manually um, to the platform. Um, if there was for some reason a golf was having issues submitting that score. Uh, another question we've been asked on general play is when you go into the WHS CDH, you'll see there's a general play tab on the left-hand side. That's really just to alert 
all golf clubs or golf club administrators that someone, a member of your golf golf course or golf club is, is out submitting a general play score through the app. Once the score has been finalized in the app, that entry will disappear um, from your club platform. So you, you know, it'll automatically go into a player's record. You don't need to do anything with that score. Obviously right now, if it's still there the following day, the golf club can delete it and they can contact the golf the golfer to find out why they didn't submit that score if they want to. But as I said, in the future, <clears throat> we'll be automatically applying a penalty score for any, any score that hasn't been submitted by, by, the, by the 11.59 cutoff um, for a general play score. Moving on to general play, um, obviously done through club software provider. Um, a golf club has the authority to set the requirements and conditions for pre-registration, but once again, it must be done before the round has started. So the golf club um, can determine if they want it to be, someone has to go into the pro shop or someone has to, you know, to use a, a product in order to, to pre-register um, before, they, before they start the round of golf. But once again, it must be done um, before the round has been started. A player can't come in off the golf club, off the golf course and then say, I've had a really good score. I want to submit that score. I've had a bad score. I want to submit that score. It must be the pre-registration must take place before the round start. It's up to the golf club once again to ensure the integrity of those scores. It's really important that you know general play scores are treated just like any other score and you know, any other competition score. We need to ensure the the integrity of these, of these scores and that the marker certification has taken place. Obviously, if a golfer's pre-registered through through the club software. Um, it's up to the golf club to determine the penalty score to be applied to that, that, that golfer if the score hasn't, has, hasn't been submitted and there's no valid reason um, for submitting that score. And as we said, the rules that apply to competitions for marker, certification, scorecard, signatures, uh, all, all applies to general play scores. So if your product uh, doesn't meet the requirements um, through, the score, you know, through the score entry method, then a, a scorecard, whether physical, electronic, um, must also be submitted uh, to the golf club to ensure the integrity of, of that of that general play score. Um, so it's really Im important that you know we all have a responsibility to ensure the integrity of of general play scores, and we need to make sure that uh, whatever product we're using that that it meets those requirements. If if the product doesn't meet the requirement, you can still use that product for the score entry. There's there's, there's no problem using it for score entry, but there must be some other method um, of verification submitted in order to um, ensure the integrity of that score. Uh, next one is obviously um, uh, app version. We've had a few questions on, on um, Android um, and app and, and how they release their updates and, and things like that. So one thing is important that some phones, for some reason, need to have cleared the cache. Um, if you don't, then um, the app, you don't get the automatic update. Um, so you may need to close down the app um, re and go into the app again in order to get the, the automatic updates. It's also really important to ensure in your phone settings that it's set to automatic update because um, we, we have been doing a lot of a lot of development over the last four or five weeks, as you can imagine. So there has been a lot of app releases um, over a short period of time. So it's really important that you know you won't get the most up to date updates or fixes or improvements if you're not on the most up to date version of the app. And we have had a lot of emails from golfers who couldn't do general play scores or were having issues with their app. And when you actually look had a look at the version they were on, they were on a, a version from you know, four or five versions ago. So it's really important that, you know, your golfers are on the most up-to-date versions of the app to get the most, the most out of the functionality. And briefly, just a quick one on handicap adjustments. I mean, obviously, and handicap updates, the scores should be sent to the WHS platform, whether the competition has been closed or not. Um, it's, it's one question we've had a lot of, we, you know, golf has been out, we've submitted scores, we play in a competition today, but the scores haven't gone automatically to the platform. So um, as long as it's been sent, the handicap will be recalculated, but um, you just need to speak to your software provider, I think, to better understand the process that they use for uh, getting those scores to the WHS platform. But it should happen um, daily, um, whether the competition has been closed or not. And the last one, we've had a few issues on, on, on a nine hole score issue where the wrong adjusted gross score had been sent to the WHS platform, which has caused a lot of large minus differentials on scoring records over the last couple of weeks. So uh, the, the rules for WHS state that if, if, uh, if an adjusted gross score instead of the hole by hole scores are being sent to the platform, then it should be the 18 hole scaled up value that's been sent and not just the nine hole value. So in those cases, we've received a, 
an, uh, an 18 hole value for course rating and slope rating, but it only received a nine hole value for the adjusted gross score. And that's why um, it's, it's, it's created essentially a large minus differential that's affected certain golfers who have submitted um, nine hole scores. But we've been told that the, it's, been, it's been fixed now. Um, and the golf club can obviously delete the score and re-upload manually. Um, or the ISV could delete the score and re-upload, but that, that obviously has, should have been fixed now. So any nine hole scores being uploaded to the platform should have the correct uh, 18 hole adjusted gross score and therefore have the correct calculation um, applied to the back of that. Um, so that kind of brings us to the end. I do realize um, that we've had uh, a, few, a few questions come in there. So I would just like to pick up a few of these quickly. I know we hadn't planned on doing a quick Q and A, but I think it's just important to, to go through a couple of these before we, we kind of sign off there. So um, can a list of clubs in general play be in alphabetical order? Yes, that'll be part of um, one of the releases coming soon. So we will make sure that um, gets uh, listed in alphabetical order. If I, if I don't pick up any of these, it's because they, they need a little bit more explaining. So once again, we will um, add these to the FAQs, but I thought it was important to, to pick up a, a few of these now. Um, conflicted, if you do get the red highlighted on your WHS CDH, that's because at time of transition, that player was in conflicted. So as long as they're showing on your WHS CDH, they are listed correctly against your golf club in the WHS, WHS system. So even though you may get that red highlight through them, it's, it's almost at the time of transition, that player may have been in conflict, which is why you're, why you're seeing that. Um, <clears throat> Uh, we touched very briefly on this is why on some players records does it show scores as home clubs um, despite the scores being on away ones and once again it's to do with the how the club information was uploaded um, to the to the CDH so even though the score was on an away course it's actually the home club's ID which has been uploaded to the CDH so when we did that that CDH the SSS search um, it's applied the slope rating of the home club instead of the away club, because if we didn't know where that data, where that where that score was essentially come from, came from, we, we can't apply the correct course to it, which is why it's it's applied the home course information instead of the away course information. Um, yes, we'll be issuing FAQs on the back of this, um, so um, you'll get the FAQs probably early next week. Um, Alphabetical one we've touched on. Uh, general play category for both qualifying non -qualifying. general play is a category by itself. So within competition, you'll have qualifying, non-qualifying, but all general play scores are essentially um, qualifying scores. Um, will the Scottish Golf App record scores outside of, of Scotland? Hopefully, yes. Uh, we don't currently have access to uh, the WHS course data for any golf clubs or any golf courses outside of Scotland, but hopefully. Yes, eventually we'd love for, for, this, for, for any general play score submitted globally to be able to um, submit it through the Scottish Golf app. Um, and yeah, just to clarify at the minute, if you do have golfers in other jurisdictions, they, they will need to be issued with the Scottish Golf CDH in that, in that interim period um, before the cross-border functionality is, is actually in place. Um, just to confirm, as Adam said, the playing handicap should be um, calculated using machine precision. So if, 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 if you found it has been um, calculated using one decimal point, um, then um, it, it, it is meant to be um, machine precision. True, true course handicap value should be used. Um, we will hope to get a calculator into the app soon for calculating playing handicaps. It's one of the questions we've been asked so that it calculates machine precision. Um, Yes, just to confirm, your ISV should be able to claim and resign a player. Um, so we will look at building this functionality into the WHS CDH so that you can click on a button and resign that player. Um, but we were we were asked at the time that that um, in order to still have an API that allowed software providers to do this, so they could still offer that service to their um, to the golf clubs who are their customers. So that's why we built that API in in order to be able to do that under WHS. Um, there's, there's a few different options for penalty scores. Once again, we'll add that in a, into a bit more detail um, when we do the FAQs. There's a few questions there on penalty scores. So um, the course handicap charts, they, they are still valid. As Adam said, the course handicap should be what a player should use for 
um, putting on their scorecard and for playing their round of golf. It's the course handicap value that, that a player should use for, for um, playing their, their round of golf. So the course handicap charts are definitely valid and, and that's the value that a player should be, as I said, putting on their scorecard and using for their round of golf. Um, and that's probably some of the ones I wanted to. So general play button's not showing in the app. As I say, that's uh, if you contact it via the app um, registration, it should be, you, you'll notice there's, a, there's another function on the app now called course, WHS course lookup. So the general play button, it, it flashes between the handicap index and the general play and the one button. We've added course, um, course lookup where you can search any course on the database and see your course handicap for that for that golf course. That's a new addition. There's still some more tweaks to be done through that. Um, can you record a general play score directly through the Scottish Golf app currently? Yes, you definitely can. So you should have that functionality. Um, once again, going back to the initial handicap index, we haven't had access to club um, to club software. So. If you had golfers without CDH numbers, you had golfers on your club platform. If those golf scores weren't uploaded to the CDH, we just we just haven't been able to use them because we, we just didn't know what they were. Um, and once again, you can click on the, 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 the CDH system tab to see what scores had historically been uploaded to the CDH. So that player may have been in conflict or, or there's some reason that those scores didn't get uploaded to the CDH. But if they haven't been uploaded, unfortunately, we haven't been able to, to use them. Um, if a player had submitted three cards under the old system, yeah, how that worked under the, under the Congo system, um, the three cards were never uploaded to the CDH, only the initial handicap was. So if uh, in time of when, when we took the transition, for instance, a player may have been awarded an initial handicap, which matched their old Congo handicap, but because there wasn't three scores on the system, it hasn't recalculated. So until a new three scores go on the system, the handicap won't recalculate. So you can upload those uh, scores to the CDH, to the, sorry, to the WHS system if you still have them, um, or you can upload three general play scores in order to get the handicap calculation starting to happen. Just to confirm, there does need to be three scores on a scoring record in order for the WHS system to start recalculating. Um, yes, you can have a qualifying competition while playing off winter, winter tees and fairway mats, as long as obviously the, the golf club has been rated or the golf course has been rated from those tees, but if you um, are playing from a traditional set of tees, which I shouldn't say traditional, sorry, it's a set of tees that have already been rated, then if you're using mats off the fairway or preferred lies off the fairway, then yes, you can have a qualifying competition. And if there's no more than two winter greens in place, as Adam outlined there, you can still have a qualifying competition that can, that can count towards a player's uh, WHS index. Cross-border, as I say, we're pushing really hard for that. We're hoping to get that up and running as soon as possible, um, ideally before uh, the start of the playing season um, or next year or so. There's, there's no kind of non-season under WHS, but ahead of the, the main golfing season next year, we hope to have that, have that, have that in place. Um, the most up-to-date version of the app, it should be uh, one point, um, if I just find that for you. 1.13.1 R15 is the most up-to-date version of the app. Um, can you reset the low handicap index if it's wrong? Yes, of course you can. Uh, you can reset the low handicap index if you deem that it's not correct. Um, that probably brings us to the end of the, the, the quick fire q and I just thought it was really uh, important to kind of pick up some of, those, um, some of those questions that came in there. But once again, if we haven't, um, had a chance to get to any of those. We will be doing an FAQ uh, document that will get out to you hopefully um, early next week in order for you to answer your, your specific question that you may have um, may have asked us today. So ladies and gentlemen, um, this brings us a, to a close to today's Zoom panel call. We would like to once again, thank you all for joining today. And we hope that hearing from, from the team has given you some valuable insight and, and answered many of the questions that you may have sent us in via email. Obviously we, ha we have been receiving high volumes of emails at the minute. And that's why we thought it was really important to, to come on this call and to hopefully help you um, get the answers to your questions. Um, so don't forget, um, if you'd like to catch up on any of today's discussion or to find out more information on WHS, you can visit our website for more information. That's www.scottishgolf.org. Um, but for now, thank you for tuning in, stay safe and have a very good day. Thank you. Thank you.